molecular orbital diagram for N2 with a minus two charge. We're gonna need to draw the atomic orbitals of two N atoms to start. You can draw the 1s non-bonding orbitals if you'd like, but let's start with the actual valence shell. You've got a 2s subshell in a nitrogen atom, and then three 2p orbitals, all at the same energy. Here in black, we have the atomic orbitals for nitrogen. We're going to have to draw the same thing on the other side, put this nitrogen's 2s energy level at the same height on the page, and then try to make the three 2p orbitals you draw for the other nitrogen at the same height as those ones. Great. Now what happens when these bonding orbitals overlap? Well, these are atomic orbitals. We're going to create molecular orbitals in between. When the 2s orbitals overlap, you end up with a sigma 2s bonding orbital and a sigma 2s anti-bonding orbital. I'm trying to make it so that these lines are centered between these two, so that the average between these is the same as the average here. That's because we're not creating or destroying any energy. When the 2p orbitals overlap, this is where it gets just a tiny bit tricky. The lowest energy molecular orbitals formed are two pi 2p bonding orbitals, and then next highest is a sigma 2p bonding orbital. Now these two are actually switched if this had been O2 or F2 or neon 2. Once you get to oxygen, the effective nuclear charge affects the pull on each of these molecular orbitals, but this is nitrogen, this is the order for it. Next highest we have the pi 2p antibonding orbitals and the sigma 2p antibonding orbitals. Again, I tried to center that relative to these. Now, you're going to have to fill this with electrons. Be careful about how many there are. I haven't included the inner shell here. So that means nitrogen's bringing five electrons each, five valence electrons each. There are two of them. And because of this minus two charge, there's two extra bonus electrons. That gives me 12 valence electrons total for this particular molecular orbital diagram. We're gonna fill it from the bottom up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Notice I spread them out before I doubled them up. That's Hun's rule. 9, 10, 11, 12. Oh, I'm glad I mentioned Hun's rule. These, you'll lose marks if you put both of these electrons in the same orbital. You're going to put one electron in each of the degenerate orbitals before you start doubling them up. Here's your drawn molecular orbital diagram for N2, 2 minus. What your teacher might ask you for is the bond order. That's one half of the number of electrons in bonding orbitals take away the number of electrons in anti-bonding orbitals. Bonding orbitals don't have asterisks. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons in the bonding orbital. Asterisk did it electrons include these two and then these two, that's four. 8 minus 4 is 4, half of that is 2. It is a whole number, a double bond between the two n atoms. That implies that it's probably stable because it is a whole number. I actually did some research before this and couldn't find any mention of this ion anywhere in the literature. But, uh, I mean, maybe my Googling is just not good. What matters to you is that you can draw the molecular orbital diagram. Here you are. You're welcome. Best of luck.